Hello, everybody. Um, I hope today finds you well. Um, please, please pray for me. My brain is just, I'm a little bit, um, I'm having a hard time concentrating today. Uh, I haven't been sleeping well. Um, I've been having some, like, just health issues with my skin. Um, so if you could just pray for me, I greatly appreciate it. Um, but right now, I want to talk about something that's on my mind because it's convicting me personally. We've been wa or we watched the other night as a family um, the Pilgrim's Progress. Now I'm going to tell you it doesn't have the entire story. There's some things they had to cut down because the movie itself is pretty long. But there's a place in it that we talked about with our kids. And I've got a copy of the Pilgrim's Progress right here because I'm going to reference it. But it's a place called the Vanity Fair. And you know, having read most of The Pilgrim's Progress, um, you know, I've, I've read, uh, there's certain parts I haven't read, but I've read most of it. There are some things that um, really bother me about this place. And the reason being is the Vanity Fair is all about pleasure. It's something that when the pilgrims arrive, it's faithful and Christian together. They're confronted with all sorts of sinful desires, lusts and, and happiness. and not, not that things are necessarily bad, but it's just things that people constantly indulge in. And it's what they look for for fulfillment in life. And unfortunately, Christians, we do the same thing. By the way, this, this town Vanity Fair, it's where the magazine derives its name. It's a mockery of what uh, Bunyan wrote in Pilgrim's Progress. It's an indulgence of every pleasure in life. And unfortunately, too many of us, we are spending all of our time indulging in pleasure as opposed to seeking after God with all our hearts. And I'm not speaking to you, I'm speaking to me. God has removed a lot of things from my life lately, but I could tell you I've missed out on a lot with my kids. I've missed out on a lot with God. I've missed out on a lot because I've indulged in pleasures. Not necessarily bad pleasures, just seeking to entertain myself. Whether I'm playing a game on my phone or on Facebook or or uh, I'm, I'm on my computer or I'm, I'm doing something else, I've missed out on a lot. Because I've indulged my vanity. I'm going to read to you a description out of the book and then we're going to get into our text for the day. But I, I want you to hear this. Then I saw in my dream that when they were got out of the wilderness, they presently saw a town before them, and the name of the town is Vanity. And at the town there is a fair kept called Vanity Fair. That's where they get the name of the magazine, like I said. It is kept all year long. It beareth the name Vanity Fair because the town where it is kept is lighter than vanity, and also because all that is there is sold. Or that cometh thither is vanity. Almost like Ecclesiastes, right? As is the saying of the wise, all that cometh is vanity. This fair is no newly erected business, but a thing of ancient standing. I will show you the or original of it. Almost 5,000 years ago, there were pilgrims walking to the celestial city, as these two honest persons are, and Beelzebub, Apollyon, and Legion, with their companions perceiving by the path that the pilgrims made that their way to the city lay through this town of vanity, they contrived there to set up a fair, a fair wherein be sold all sorts of vanity, and that it should last all the year long. Therefore, at this fair are all such merchandise sold as houses, lands, trades, places, honors, Perfumments, titles, countries, kingdoms, lusts, pleasures and delights of all sorts, as hordes or as whores, bods, wives, husbands, children, masters, servants, lives, blood, bodies, souls, silver, gold, pearls, precious stones, and what not. And moreover, at this fair, there is at all times to be seen jugglings, cheats, games, plays, fools, apes, knaves, and rogues. And that 
of every kind. Here are to be seen, too, and that for nothing, thefts, murders, adulteries, false swears, and that of a blood-red color, and as in other fairs of less moment, there are the several rows and streets under their proper names, where such and such wares are vended, so here likewise you have the proper places, rows, streets, vis-a-vis -vis countries and kingdoms, where the wares of this fair are soonest to be found. Here is Britain row, the French row, the Italian row, the Spanish row, the German row, where several sorts of varieties are to be sold, but as in other fairs, some one commodity as there is as the chief of all the fair. So the wear of Rome and her merchandise is greatly promoted in this fair. Only our English nation, with some others, have taken a dislike thereat. Now, why did I talk about this? The way he describes this fair is the way we seek after things. Now, this was written in 1600, so the U.S. wasn't represented. But if you think about this, we seek after fairs. Andrew, how are you today, brother? We seek after vanities. We seek to indulge our pleasures. Why is it that we can't be close to God? It's a question we ask ourselves constantly. I, as a preacher, ask myself this constantly. And I can tell you with full assurance of faith that it is because I am seeking my own pleasures and not God. I seek after my wants and my wishes and my desires, but I don't seek the will of my Father in heaven. This magazine, Vanity Fair, started showing up one day. And my wife asked why I looked so disgusted at it. I said, because this is an open mockery of, of Pilgrim's Progress, which is... You know, I'm going to tell you, this book, apart from the Bible, is perhaps the most published book in the world, the most read and the most spiritual. Most preachers have been talking about this for the last 400 years, seconding it only to the Bible. It's amazing and a wonderful book about a spiritual journey. And the two characters that are going, Christian and, and faithful, they're entering this fair and and they come across the people and, and the people say, come, we have everything you could ever want. Whatever you desire, you can purchase it here. And the two men act as faithful witnesses and they say, you can't give us what we already have. You can't sell this to us. We have joy that lasts. We have uh, treasures eternal. We have a crown promised to us by the king. And the people get upset with them because they can't find those pleasures at the fair. It is things that only the king can offer them. And so because they get jealous, and so because they cannot find those heavenly pleasures in an earthly vain fair, they kill faithful, and they imprison a Christian. But here's the thing is, at the fair there are people who agree with what the witness testimony of faithful and Christian were, and, and one of the uh, men set to guard Christian actually frees him and goes on the journey to go meet God, or the king, in his celestial city and, and receive that reward. And Christians, here's what we're doing. And, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a scripture that is really relevant to this. Good morning, Carmen and Raul. It's good to see y'all. We are in the vanity fair, but we're indulging and not proclaiming the greatness of our God. We are seeing the world falling down around us and yet we're calling out politicians and politics instead of saying there is good news. The king has come. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. There is freedom from your sorrows. There is freedom from this. These pleasures are temporary but what God has eternal. We are instead indulging in the pleasures of the fair and I'm not preaching to you. I'm talking to me. Christians, we're indulging and following after things that have no purpose and no value apart from wetting a temporary appetite. There's nothing wrong with some of the things we chase after, but to chase after them and, and not seek God in the process. 
we're indulging and we're not allowing God to be God. Listen to what John has to say on this subject. Do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For everything that belongs to the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's lifestyle is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away. But the one who does God's will remains forever. You see, we cannot chase after. We cannot chase after all these lusts. And it's not merely a sexual thing. That's not necessarily what lust is. We lust after popularity. We lust after entertainment. We lust after something to do, especially since this quarantine began. We, we constantly are reaching for things. We're looking for things. We're looking for the next big thing. Some of us bounce from place to place and house to house and home to home and town to town. And I'm not saying this to shame anybody, but some of us do that because we can't find satisfaction where God puts us. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times when God moves us. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's sometimes when people are merely seeking to fulfill themselves as opposed to seeking to fulfill God's will and purpose for their lives. We indulge our lusts for fulfillment. We seek fulfillment in every other thing that the world provides, but we find nothing. And so we move on. We move on to the next husband or the next wife. We move on to the next relationship. We move on to the next job. We move on to the next town. Saying, maybe this will be different. I had a, a friend of mine make an observation about his grandmother who constantly was moving to new places. He said, she's always trying to get away from herself. But when she gets to the next place, she finds that she meets herself there. Pretty astute observation. And we've got to be careful. The only fulfillment that lasts is found in Jesus Christ. Our road, if you get a chance to read this, I am advocating this book. It's amazing. There's a sh there's even a movie on, on most platforms. We watched it on Pure Flix, but it's on Amazon, and I'm sure it's on Netflix. The road to Christ is going to be full of toil and hardships. There's going to be people who seek to destroy us, whether our reputation, someday maybe our very lives. But we've got to ask ourselves, am I here with a purpose? Or am I here just to indulge myself? Am I here to get my kicks while I can get them? I'm only here a short while. I might as well enjoy life while I have it. That's how a lot of us live, but that's not the way to Christ. Our goal should always be not the love of this world, but to get to Christ. And others will follow, just as with the pilgrims. Faithful gave his life, and, and someone hopeful was his name, came alongside and, and escaped Vanity Fair with Christian. How often do we indulge our vanities? And the people we should be bringing alongside us only see us as being like them. What's so different about our relationship with Christ that calls people to come to Him? Are we in love with the world or are we in love with our Father? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. I'm again talking to me. I'm praying for you today. I hope that this has been helpful to you as it has been speaking to me. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will do a video on them uh, so long as you ask questions. I want to hear what you have to say. Let us know what you think of what we talked about today. Let us know if anything stuck out to you. But I'm going to pray for you. Get into the Word daily. Surround yourself with things that are going to build you up and strengthen your faith. 
and watch how God moves as you seek after him. James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. If you are seeking after God, you will find him. But if you're seeking after self, it's just a lot of emptiness. God bless you. I love you. I'll be praying for you.